Welcome to another episode of iPrint 3D. Today's episode is sponsored by Tango from Voxel Dance. Tango is a slicer software that helps beginners and experts alike to navigate the world of 3D printing with built-in preset parameters and presets that actually work. Even beginners can start to print with just one click. Check it out today at voxeldance.com slash tango or see the link in our video's description. Much like in the other two episodes talking about the auto supporting script function, we're going to be talking about that once again, but this time we're messing with a giant piece of figurine. This lady measures in at 150 millimeters and she's pretty large for a full sized fig that isn't in parts, to be honest. And usually I would, yes, I would go about hollowing a part like this because honestly she's, she's chunky in places and I think hollowing is just the way to go. You're going to save material. However, I was curious to see how Voxel Dance's Tango would do an auto support script generation on something this big. And I was going to try a few different variations here and also compare them again to Chichibox and Lechi Slicer, as we've been doing in the last couple episodes. And this will continue to be the case because I just love to do these comparisons. And they work out really well. I mean, so far we're seeing that Tango is definitely winning as far as like being able to generate auto supports that conceivingly can work. Now, I've done some test prints with some of them, not all of them, and the ones that I have tried have worked. We have only had one minor failure, and it was actually just a part of the latticing structure of the support, but the piece itself actually survived. It was almost as if the latticing structure is there as a redundancy of sorts to help prevent full failure from occurring. So, that being the case, I don't know if that's actually the way it's supposed to function, but it did. And it worked, so yay. So far, so good. I don't have any complaints. Now, the auto support generation on something this large, usually you'd think would be fairly heavy and very clustered, and you'd probably just have a hard time seeing the model. I chose to do bar support because I figured it would be a little less crowded, and I also don't feel like the latticing structure would serve much purpose. But there's so many supports stuck in here I'm not sure what I'm even looking at because it's so heavy. So it's it's a very heavy, dense supporting system that it's created here. It's not terrible. I think this could work. Um, I would give this a try. Um, I, I would probably just validate the islands and just give this a try. But um, I think this looks like it could work. Um, again, I'll probably try a couple other scripts just to see how they work out. But for the most part... As you can see, something this big, it is a little tricky to generate, I think, auto supports for it. So I think I was this was the most curious part, how well it does with a giant figurine. The program itself supposedly goes slice by slice, which is why it takes a little bit of time. It takes a bit longer than most programs to generate auto supports in Tango than it does in, in most of the other ones. But I think because it's going slice by slice, I think it's checking islands as well at the same time at whatever layer height you're printing. And then I think at the end, it's popping out the best supports it can possibly pop out based on all those factors. So I think it's important to consider that when you talk about the time sync. You know, oh, oh the Chichi Box generates supports in, uh, you know, 10 seconds. Leechy Slicer does it in four and a half. It takes these guys 60 seconds to a minute and a half. But if they're more accurate, I don't care how long it takes. See, and there we go. That's It's very similar. See, this is... a. A little bit, it's actually a little bit less dense. It's not so much covering. Uh, I'm not sure what I think would work better. I think the other option might have actually been a little bit better. Um, this is bar support figure. The feet are done well. I mean, everything else looks like it's got support. There's uh, bracings, but they're very small. The bracings are kind of cute. They're really small. They're very, they're feather light. They're almost... Uh, I think they're like, I don't know, I guess that's, that's probably another measurement connection in the script I have not messed with um, that is in there. But uh, we'll go ahead and try the smart support heavy and we'll see how that works. Personally, I'm going to just go on this just based on my experience with working with a lot of software like this. <laughs> oh so this is just an example of what the Smart Support Heavy would look like. Um, again, this might be the way to go. 
Um, I don't know. With this, it's kind of been hard to tell how the supporting structures are going to look just based on the script. Because I think it is looking at each piece individually very closely, you wind up with a really individualized auto script. I'll see. Wow, look at that. Okay, so now... I'd actually try it like this. Yeah, look at the feet. Completely well, well balanced as well. Not too thick together. They're thin... But there's so many of them, I feel like they would hold on to it. Uh, it's a little bit off my build plate here. I'd have to fix that, but that's okay. Yeah, I think that would work. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. That's interesting. Now, I've seen a lot of auto-support structures, but that is these, these are definitely cool, the way they build the little honeycomb lattice structure there um, on the um, auto-supporting scripting. It's a, it's a really neat way to do it. I've never seen any of the software do this. I remember when I originally discovered Tango uh, back in the day, uh, long before I started making my own videos, and I played around with it for a little bit. And I think I even did a video or two about it, and we talked about it for a little bit there. Um, but for the most part, I didn't really stay on it too much because Lychee Slicer was really the way I went, and it seemed to make sense for... Uh, my workflow, seeing as that's how things were going. And a light cheese laser also became very popular. Um, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and look at the same model in Chitu Box, and we're going to run some comparisons. Now, I am going to go ahead and load that up. And I already did the pre-processing, so it should be a little faster this time. I am sorry about that. That won't be happening again, as I've learned my lesson on that one, and I do it off camera. Anyway, um, the supporting structure for this one, where, like I said, we're going to go with a medium. I might play around and do heavies. We might see which one looks better. Um, Chi 2 Box gets a lot of um, praise for auto-supporting. A lot of people who swear by it say that it works really well. They, they think the support structures are good and that they swear by them. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with that because, I mean, everybody has their own way of doing things. There is no wrong way to do this. There is just a lot of right ways. Um, I think that if that's the way you want to do it, great. I personally prefer just doing hand supporting um, myself. And for that purpose, I like using my preferred software, which is Lychee Slicer. But I am learning that Tango can save me a lot of time because it does actually seem like it does a pretty good job of auto supporting, which is great. I mean, here, here, for example, let's look at the bottom of the feet. There's so many supports that are just, like, why wouldn't it cover the front of the feet? Why wouldn't it add a little bit more of an outline? It, some things don't make sense. Personally, it, and, and for me, my, shape, my script would literally just go and silhouette the shape. Because what, what I've learned is that you just want to support the shape of the object, and that will support the object. Everything else in the middle... Is just there to help support the material from getting pulled back into the vat. Um, but you really, your outline is very important. That is, some I, some could argue it's the most important. Um, moving on to the lychee slicer comparison, we'll demo that now, and we'll, uh, it's not always the best for auto supporting. I like it for its manual supporting. Sometimes I will use the auto supporting as a basis to start my support structures and then I will build off of it because it will give me an idea sometimes as to kind of where to tackle it from or sometimes I'll just use it to create the internal structure and then I won't use it on the external structure. And this one takes a minute but uh, not too bad. We should be able to see the supporting systems added. And then bracings. And there we go. Now, this isn't a perfect solution. Um, I definitely don't like this. I would support way more of the feet. I would have a lot more supporting going on. So now we could try it heavier and see if that makes a big difference. Uh, the thing is, too, with the heavier supports, it might survive because it's going to be enough 
tug in those in the right areas that will probably survive. But the amount of damage you're going to get from those big heavy support sticks, that you're going to regret. Is it's going to be more sanding, clipping, cutting, you know, seaming, fixing, hole filling, that sort of thing. Um, overall, I don't love this auto support and I think it's terrible. I would have to sit here and mess with this myself for an hour or so. Uh, but anyway, that's the comparison. We saw Chiji Box, we saw this, and we saw Tango. Uh, I'm going to cut back to the Tango footage here in a second. And just give you guys a reminder of what the auto-supporting script looked like for that. Now, again, remember we tried a couple different variations on the auto-supporting script in Tango. And the one that we went with at the end of the day was one of the smart support features. It was, I believe it was smart support figure. And then I actually reverted back, I think, to one of the other ones with the bar supports. We're going to try it a couple different ways and see which way prints out the best. But this essentially is how you use the auto generation scripting in Tango. So that's it for this set of episodes on Tango. And we will have three more new episodes next week as we continue to talk about the different functions and features within the software. If you're interested in learning more, don't forget to check out the website voxeldance.com slash tango and there'll be a link in the description below thanks so much for watching as usual folks have a great one